Hello and welcome to this Microsoft Fabric and Azure DevOps video. Tonight, we're going to consider the practical side of the continuous integration and continuous delivery in Microsoft Fabric. So let's get started. We're going to start this end-to-end -end project by creating Azure DevOps projects, new repository and different branches for collaborations. So let's see what is CI-CD. It's a process that streamlines the development testing and deployment of code and other artifacts within the Fabric ecosystem. For the continuous integration in our sample data, we're going to have two data engineers that will work together in a shared repository by creating workspaces and notebooks attached to different branches. In the respective notebook, both will create Spark data frame and create pull requests to match their changes to the main branch. For the continuous delivery, after the successful implementation of the continuous integration, both of them will apply filter to their frame and changes will be pushed to the main branch, that is, the production workspace in Fabric. Let's see how we can implement all this solution. I'm going to come to this next slide. Now, in the next slide, we're going to go through this execution. First, we're going to create a data engineering project in the Azure DevOps and new repository. I'm going to go ahead and come to this tab. And of course, this is my dev.azure.com. And I can see my organization name. I'm going to come here in the creative project. I'm going to go ahead and call this one data engineering. And I'm going to scroll down and then go ahead and click on create. Data engineering project is created. We want to come to the repos. Now, in the repos, we want to go ahead and create a new repository. So, click on that and then choose new repository. We're going to call this one repo. You can call it any name. And in our case, we're going to have this add a readme file. Go ahead and click on create. So, we're going to have the repo created with the main branch, which is the collaboration branch. Now, in our sample case, we're going to have two data engineers that publish their work to different branches. So we're going to actually click on this main and go ahead and create a new branch. We're going to call this one Data Engineer 1. This is going to be based on the main branch. Go ahead and click on Create. And then I'm going to go back to the main branch and then go ahead and click on Create a new branch. We're going to call this one Data Engineer 2 and go ahead and click on Create. Beautiful. So for now, when when I come to the branches, of course, we're going to have three of them, the main branch, the data engineer one and two. Now, let's come to our slide. So we've actually handled this one or two. So for the third point, we're going to go ahead and create what's called the dev data engineer one and dev data engineer two workspaces in the fabric. So I'm going to come to the fabric portal. And of course, I want to come to the workspaces and create in the workspace. I'm going to call this one Dev Data Engineer 1. Go ahead and click on Apply. This is going to create the workspace. Now, we want to attach this to the Data Engineer 1 branch. So, I'm going to come to the Workspace Settings and then click on the Git Integration. And of course, I'm going to see my account. Basically, I'm going to use the Azure DevOps as the Git provider. So, I'm going to see my account. And of course, I'm going to choose my organization. This is going to be Abiola David. And then for the project, I'm going to choose the data engineering project. And then for the repository, I'm going to choose the repo. And for the branch, now this is going to be connected to the data engineer branch. So go ahead and click on the data engineer one. Go ahead and click on connect and sync. So you're connected to a Git repository. And of course, we're going to have this source control, which is really important. So we are done with this. Now, we want to go ahead and create a fabric notebook in this workspace. So I'm going to click on this nail and then click on notebook. In the notebook, we're going to rename and let's call this one notebook for data engineer one. Press enter to commit. I prepare some JavaScript code, which is going to be read into a data frame. I'm going to come here. I'm going to press Ctrl A to copy the whole thing and Ctrl C to copy and then come back to the notebook. So I'm going to go ahead and delete all of this and Ctrl V. So let's scroll up and see. Now, basically, we're going to import PySpark.sql.type. We're going to import the struct type, struct field, 
integer type and the string type. So we're going to have the definition of the schema for the data frame. So we have the schema and then we have the struct type. The struct type is a class required to define the schema of the data frame, which are the important list of struct field objects. And then for the struct field, this is a class that is used to define a single column in a data frame schema, including parameters such as column name, data type, and checking for nullable values or not. So for the struct field, we have the year as the column, and then we have the data type, the integer type, and then we have the true for nulls or not. So this is going to be the schema. And then we have the JavaScript object notation data. So this is going to follow the key value pairs. So we have the um, the key and the value. So we have the year, 20, um, year and then the value. So I'm going to scroll down. So basically, this is a single line of transaction. And this is another line of transaction. So I'm going to scroll down. So after we've defined the schema and the data, I'm going to go ahead and at the bottom, I'm going to just do DF underscore data engineer one. Let's just call it data engineer one. And then equals, I'm going to create a spark dot create data frame. So I can open the bracket and I can pass in the data and comma and then the schema. Okay, so we have these are the data, and then we have the schema at the top. So the schema comprises, um, schema comprises all the columns. So this are the schema. Let me just go up. Okay, so we have the schema, and then we have the data. So I'm gonna go back at the bottom, and once we have this, I can go on and use the df underscore data engineer one control v and use the show method to print that out. Go ahead and press control enter. So we can see we have the spark job two of two succeeded. And of course, we are able to successfully create the data frame from the JavaScript object notation data. So we have the year, the region, the subcategory, the product, price, quantity, and the sales amount columns. Beautiful. So having done this, I'm going to go ahead and close this tab for now and then return back to the dev dot dev data engineering one. So I'm going to click on the source control. When I click on that, I'm going to see we have changes to push or to commit to the data engineer one branch. So let's just give this a name. Let's just call this one created uh, data frame from json data so i can go on and click on this to select the item now we're going to have this plot because we're actually adding something into the data engineer one branch so this is going to be the plus status go ahead and click on commits so your selected changes were committed to the data engineer one branch so that's fine now we're going to have the sync and then we have the name of the workbook and then we have the type and then the name of owner and so on now we're going to come to the Azure DevOps and let's go to the data engineer one. So when I click on that, I'm going to see the newly committed notebook. So we have the notebook for data engineer one. I can click on that to expand. So I'm going to see the platform, the dot platform. This is going to actually show the schema, the metadata, and then we have in the metadata the type. This is notebook, and then we have the display name notebook for DE one. And then we have the description and then we have the configuration and then the version and logical id cool i can double click on this notebook content.py and then we're going to see under the content tab we have all the metadata such as the um, kernel info the name is synapse pies part and then we have the dependencies uh, basically we have the library we imported and then we have data when you scroll down we're going to have some quite information so these are all the data and when i scroll down i'm going to see the df underscore data engineer one and then we created the spark data frame which is cool now we're done with this when i go to the main branches let's go there click on that of course we're not going to see anything because we've actually not created a pull request so i can either create a pull request from here i can even go back to the branches to the data engineer one and I'm going to say they create a pull request. This is going to allow us to merge the changes from this data engineer one branch to the main branch. Before I create this, I'm going to come back to the Microsoft Fabric and I want to go ahead and create a new workspace. So I'm going to call this one prod and it's going to be attached to the main branch. So I'm going to type in prod for production and then click on apply. This is created. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the workspace settings and I want to click on the Git integration. Again, I'm going to choose my organization name. The project is going to be data engineering. And I want to choose the repo. And then this is going to be the main branch. 
So I'm going to scroll down and go ahead and click on connect and sync. Click on that. There we go. You're connected to Git repository. Fine. So we're going to have the source control. So I'm going to come back here and go ahead and create a pull request to match these changes from the data engineer one to the main branch. Click on that. As soon as I click on I'm going to see the title and of course I can give a description. Now, before I do that, I'm going to come to the files. When I click on the files, I'm going to see we have the plus 12 in the dot platform. So these are basically all the lines that's going to be included in the into the main branch. And then we have the notebook contents. So they're going to be adding 376 lines of code. So when you scroll, I'm going to see we have quite a lot of code and that's fine. When you come to the commits here, I'm going to say create a data frame from JavaScript or documentation data fine. Come to the overview. Now, in the overview, I can go on and provide the name for the reviewer. I'm going to just choose my name, Abiola David, and I'm going to scroll down. So I can go on and create a pull request from the data engineer one to the member. Click on the create pull request. And then we're going to go ahead and approve this um, pull request. So we're going to have this Abiola created pull request. And then we're going to see the no match conflicts detected. So we have the proposes to match data in unit one to the main branch. Once I'm fine, I'm going to go ahead and click on approve. Now we have the approve and approve with suggestion, wait for auto and so on. Let's go ahead and click on approve. And then we're going to say approved the pull request and then go ahead and click on complete. Now I'm just going to go ahead and click on complete match because we don't want to delete the data engineer one after the margin. We still need it for continuous delivery. So go ahead and click on complete match. And there we go. So when I scroll down, scroll down, I'm going to see that Abiola completed the pull request and then no match conflict, which is beautiful. And I'm going to go ahead and scroll up and I can go on and check it out in the main branch. When I come here, I'm going to see the notebook for data engineer one published which is amazing. Again, I can double click on that and I can see this actually came about five minutes ago into the data engineer one. I can click on this notebook content and I can see all the information. When I come to the history, of course, we just have this line graph, only one thing. Uh, I'm going to show this one later on, but for now, we have no previous changes. So everything looks the same, okay, on both sides. That's fine. So when I come to the prod that is attached to the main branch, I'm going to go ahead and just press Ctrl R to refresh. And of course, we're going to have something in the source control as an update. You have pending update from Git. We recommend you update the incoming changes and then continue working. So click on this source control. We're going to see one. And now we're going to have updates, not changes now, because it is actually coming into the public workspace. Now we're going to see this is a plus. Uh, go ahead and click on update all. There we go, your content was synced and we're going to have that in the product, which is cool. Now let's go back to the workspaces and then let's go to the Dev Data Engineer tool. So we're we'll going to create a new workspace and then I'm going to call this one um, Dev Data Engineer tool and then go ahead and click on Apply. So again, Okay, I can rename. This is incorrect spelling, but I'm just come here and rename. So I'm going to call this on data engineering. Okay, and then that's fine. So we want to attach this to the data engineer tool branch. So click on the Git integration and I want to choose the organization name. The project is going to be data engineering and our repository is going to be the repo. The branch is going to be data engineer tool because this is the dev platform for the data engineer tool. Go ahead and scroll down and then click on connect and sync. So this created, of course, you're connected to a Git repository. Fine. Now I can go on and create the notebook for this because both of these engineers are actually working on different projects. So one is actually reading the JavaScript data for the CIS 2015 and the order for the 2016. So again, I'm going to come to this um, notebook. And of course, I've got this code for data engineer tool. Go ahead and control A to copy, control C to copy, and then I'm going to come here, delete, control V. So this is almost similar. So we can see we have the, um, the schema, and then we have the data, and then we have the key value pairs, we have the year, and then the value. So I'm going to go ahead at the bottom again after this baby rule number 86. 
I'm going to go ahead and, go ahead and do a df underscore data engineer one, engineer two. Okay, e equals to, and I want to use the Spark dot create data frame, and then we're going to pass in the data comma, and then the schema, and then we okay, can use the variable name here. Go ahead and copy this, Control V, and then use the show method to print Control Enter. There we go. So we are able to successfully read the data into the Spark data frame. So we have the transaction for the 2016. Beautiful. I'm going to go ahead and rename this to make it easier for us to understand. So notebook for um, data engineer tool and press enter. So I'm going to go ahead and close this for now. And then when I come back to that workspace, there's going to be something for us to commit. So click on the source control and then we have the commit. We're going to call this one created data frame from JavaScript data. So go ahead and select the items and click on commit. Now we are committing to the data engineer tool branch tool. Click on commit. So there we go. Your selected merges changes were committed. So I can come back here and I can go to the branches and then go to the data engineer tool. Okay, there we go. We just arrived now, which is super cool. And I can go on and create a pull request to merge that to the main branch. So this is going to be from the data engineer tool into the main branch. So everything is almost the same. Go ahead and, you know, provide a reviewer name. Okay, I'm going to choose my name and create the pull request. So once the pull request has been triggered, I'm going to go ahead and approve and complete the pull request. So click on complete merge. Okay, there we go. So it has been merged into the main branch. So we have the merge PR3. Go ahead and click on the main branch. And we're going to see we have the notebook for data engineer tool. Again, I can double click to check it out. I can go to the notebook content and I can see the whole thing, which is super cool. Again, I'm going to come back here and go. Let us close this. Let's go back to the prod. Okay, production that is attached to the main branch. Again, we're going to see an update to attend to. Click on that and then go ahead and click on update all. So your content was synced. So that's fine. So we're going to have the notebook for the data engineer one and two. I'm going to go back to the dev for the data engineer one. Go back to that workspace. And then let's go back to the notebook. Let's open it up. Now in the notebook, I'm going to go ahead and scroll down. Okay. Let me scroll down. Okay. I'm just going to go ahead and copy this variable name. Okay. This is actually incorrect spelling. No problem. Let me just copy that. And when I scroll down, I can go on and create a new cell. Control V. And they want to use the filter function. So for the filter function, we want to filter the data frame for the data engineer one that equal to the product column. So I'm going to type in the product column. So I'm going to say, hey, is the product column equal equals to inside double quote laptop so this is going to be the name and then i can use the dot show method to print that out so again let me check it out so we have the um, product that's fine i'm going to go ahead and run all the cells because it, this has been disconnected click on the run all and it's going to run this again and then we're going to see the result at the bottom there we go. So we have this is working. So we have the uh, filter for all the product that equal to laptop for the data engineer one. Now don't worry about this um, error in the naming convention. That's fine. So I can go back to the dev data engineer one workspace and then maybe under three minutes or so, I should be able to see a changes in the source control. So I'm going to go ahead and match. Okay, there we go. It's there. So let's just call this one um, filter the products that equal to laptop okay so once this is done i can go on and select now we can see we this is a modify not add no delete now delete is always red the added is going to be the green and then the modified is going to be this color here so go ahead and click on commit to the data engineer one branch so there we go your selected changes were committed and i'm going to go back and go to the branches now when i go to the branches i'm going to go to the data engineer one and i'm going to see that okay something just came in now now let's check it out i'm going to click on this and then go to the notebook content and of course let's go to the history now 
when I go to the history, we're going to see we have this graph, okay, extended. So the first one is this created and then the filter, which is cool. Now let's go to the compare. Now in the compare, we can see this is the previous one, you know, the first one we did by creating all of this code. And when I scroll down, there's going to be some changes at the bottom. Can you see? So previously, we don't have this you know, filter, but now in the new stage, we have 11 lines added. So we applied um, the filter function on top of the data engineer one data frame which is super cool so i can go on and create a pull request and i will match this into the main branch so this is fine one to the main branch and uh, i can just choose the name of the reviewer abiola david all right of course we're not talking about the advanced security because you can actually protect the branches so that the data engineers do not make the changes to the main branch directly but just saying this major part so i'm going to scroll down and click on the create pull request and then i want to approve this and then go ahead and complete the request click ok okay that's fine when i go to the main branch and um, i'm going to see for the data engineer one click on that i'm going to click on the notebook content and when i go to the compare and i scroll down uh, to the compare i'm going to scroll down and i'm going to see the changes can you see? Yeah, this is fine. So this has been published fine. I'm going to come back to the prod workspace. So the production, click on that. And then we're going to see there's a change to commit. Fine. So now this is going to be modified also. Okay. So go ahead and click on. And now before I click on this, let me show you the notebook one. Before you know committing or accepting the changes, of course, we don't have the filter at the bottom. Can you see? It's absolutely nothing at the bottom. Let's go back. To the prod and then go ahead and commit so prod click on updates and then click on update all so as soon as that is updated in this prod workspace we're going to see the filter in the notebook one okay your content was synchronized which is fine so i can go back to the notebook for the data engineer one so when i go back let me just say another user has so, okay let me just check that again okay let me close this and uh, let's close this and uh, let's go back to the data engineer one okay when i scroll i'm going to see the filter at the bottom can you see we have the filter which is super cool now let's go ahead and do the same thing for the data engineer two i'm going to go to the dev data engineer two click on that and then we'll go ahead and apply maybe a filter also Let's say we want to filter all the. Okay, let's go down. Um, I'm going to go ahead and copy the variable. So I'm just going to copy this. And when I scroll down, and go ahead and control V. So I'm going to use the dot filter function there. And then for the filter, let's want to filter all the regions that equals to, uh, let's say, east. So their frame, are you dot and i'm going to put in the name of the column the region i want to say equals equals into double quotes east region and they want to use the dot show method to display this filter okay so this is going to try an error because we have to you know run this code at the top first so let's see it's going to try, try an error in a moment okay there we go so this is not defined because you know we have actually not executed the first one so click on the run all and then this is going to run the first one at the top and then this is going to work okay so this is fine so when i scroll down and there we can see so we've filtered all the region that a equal to east which is super cool and let's go ahead and close this and close because it is saved automatically and in the dev data engineer tool i'm going to see if there's a new thing to update so let's say uh filter the region that equal to east so go ahead and make these changes commit to the data engineer to branch so there we go and then we can come back here and let's go to the branches now the branches i'm going to go to the data engineer tool and then we can see we have that sorted and then we'll create a pull request so when we merge into the main branch i can use the same name and then go ahead and choose the name of course i can even forget about this it's not compulsory click on the create pull request 
and then we're going to approve and complete the march so click on that there we go and we can go and check it out in the main branch and come there let's come to the data engineering tool click on that and i want to go to the cont notebook and then come to the compare so when i scroll down i'm going to see the changes here there we go so we have the filter which is super amazing now let's do something i'm going to go back to the fabric so uh let me go back to the dev engineer one all right okay so let me just apply one more filter so let's see i want to filter let me just copy this code to make it easier and straightforward i'm going to copy this code okay and scroll down and i'm going to paste okay let's want to filter to return all the product that equals to tablet i'm going to just type in our uh, tablet here and go ahead and run all so when i run all this is going to execute all the code okay so we have all the product that equal to tablets now i'm going to go ahead and commit so i'm going to come back here in the data engineer one go ahead and let's call this one uh, tablet product filter filtered and then go ahead and commit okay so this is going to be matched to the data engineer one so our goal is I'm actually going to accept this into the membrane and then go back and revert or roll back. So I'm going to come back here and then we'll go to the branches to the data engineer one. So when I click on that, it's going to be a new change. So I can click on this and let's check it out. I'm coming to the compare and when I scroll down, I'm going to see we have the filter for the product that equal to tablets. Now I'm going to go ahead and create a pull request. So when I create a pull request, I'm going to go ahead and let me just go ahead and approve the pull request. Let me scroll down, go ahead and create, uh, approve, and then we can complete that process. So that's completed. And of course, when I go back to my prod workspace, so the production, and I'm going to see the changes waiting to be accepted. So I'm going to click on this and then just go ahead and accept the or update all the changes okay there we go so this has been um, synchronized now when i go back to the notebook for the data engineer one of course i'm going to see that filter at the bottom here can you see so we have the um, product that equals to um tablet which is fine no, but i'm going to go back here now what about if i want to roll back or revert these changes this um filter from here what do i do i'm going to use this functionality called the revert it's going to roll back so click on that and when i click on that i'm going to say hey revert pull request 36 so revert the changes made in this pull request into a target branch a topic branch will be created with the reverted changes and then you'll be prompted to create a pull request to the target branches topic branch name required go ahead and click on revert so when i click on revert so we're going to have this the revert operation successfully created the new branch data engineer one revert from main so i'm going to go ahead and complete this so go ahead and click on this create the reverse click on that and then again i'm going to require i will provide the approval so go ahead and click on the approve and can you see we have the approve and then click on complete to complete the reverse we have the revert table product filtered so go ahead and click on complete merge so there we go the revert is there and i can go back to the notebook the production workspace so let me just click this for now and let's go to the pro so when i go to the production i'm going to see this change okay so i'm going to go ahead and accept the change go ahead and click on the change so this is going to be about the reversal so go ahead and click on update all so as soon as i click on update all we're going to see the reversal by the way we have the git status update required so let's finish updating all of this and uh, let's see what happened in the notebook for the data engineer one your content was synchronized so when i go back here of course i'm not going to see that filter dot or that equals to table can you see it's gone off so we have the um, product that equals to um, tablet you know reverse out which is cool so this is basically how we can um, revert things now that's fine so let's go to our slide now in our slide we want to go ahead and uh, create a lake house. We're going to open a new notebook 
and then name as DE1 and 2 notebook. And they're going to fetch all the codes in the notebook for the data engineer 1 and 2. So I'm going to come back here and I want to make sure I'm in the production. So in the production, I'm going to click on this name and I want to click or create a link out. Let's just call this one sales data match. Okay, go ahead and click on create. So this is going to create a link out for us. Now in the link, yes, so just go ahead and click on this open new notebook. So click on that. So I'm just going to call this one uh, notebook for data engineer one and two. So notebook for DE1 and DE2. So go ahead and click OK. So now I can come back to the prod and I'm just copy the code you know, to make it quite easier, uh, straightforward. I'm going to copy this code in this notebook for the data engineer one. So I'm just going to copy this major part. So go ahead and control C to copy. And then let me go back to the notebook for both of them. I'm going to come in and control V to paste. And let's just go ahead and print this. So let's see the code. Okay, there we go. So we have the code here. That's fine. So let's go ahead and do the same thing for the data engineer 2 notebook so i'm going to come back to the prod and let's open it up the engineer okay no, no let's go with the d e2 okay this okay so i'm going to go ahead and copy this code also let's control c to copy and then go back to the notebook for the de1 and de2 i'm going to scroll down and create a new cell go ahead and control v to paste and control enter to print that all right, so there we go. So we have the 2016, and then when you go to the top, we have the 2015, so which is fine. So the next thing we we'll do is to come to this notepad. Now, I just have some code here. So basically, we're going to combine the data frame into one. So I'm going to go ahead and copy um, this code, or let's just copy the whole thing first. So let's just copy the whole thing, control C to copy, and I'm going to scroll down. All right, so when I scroll down, I can create a new cell. Control V. So this is basically we're gonna have the data frame for the data engineer one, and then we're gonna use the union by name period or the function, and we're gonna pass in the data frame for the data engineer two. I want to make sure that the name corresponds. So let me go up and copy the names of the. Let me just copy this to be sure. Okay, and then I'm gonna scroll down. Okay, I think this is correct. And uh, let's do the same thing for the first one at the top. So I'm going to copy, I actually rename this, so this is fine. Let me copy this and let me paste it in. Okay, so that we can have the same thing. So after, okay, let's just go ahead and run this code first. I'm going to cut this out and control enter. So when I press control enter, we're going to have this um, result for the combined data frame for the data engineer one and two. So there we go code executed in 10 seconds one for one milliseconds so we're going to have the 2015 and 2016 so i can go on and now don't forget this is attached to the workspace we created this sales data match i'm going to control v so we're going to just go ahead and use the dot write dot format and it's going to be written in the form of a delta table and then we're going to use the mode uh, method to overwrite if it exists and then we're going to use the save as table and then this is going to be the name of the table combined sales so let's go ahead and control enter to run the code and uh, let's see the solution okay so you can see this actually executed in 27 seconds and so on which is fine now let's go back to the sales data merge workspace i'm going to just go ahead and click on this uh, ellipses and then click on refresh when i click on refresh i'm going to see the combined sales which is super cool. So this is the Delta table. Amazing. So let's just see the preview of the data. So let's just wait. Uh, as we're waiting, let's just quickly switch to the SQL analytics endpoint. And then we can interrogate the data and then we can analyze further. Okay. Amazing. So we have the data as a combined sales. So I can scroll down and check it out. Can you see we're going to have the 2015 and then the 2016, which is super cool. And then our data analyst can go on and perform some data analysis and then get some insights for some strategic data-driven decisions. 
I'm going to click on this new SQL. Let's just perform a simple um, data analysis using the SQL. So let's say I want to select the um, year column. So I'm going to type in year column and then comma, and then we want to use the sum function to aggregate the sales. And I'm going to put this as total sales. And then we want to specify the name of the table, which is going to be in this case combined sales. And then we want to use the group by clause. So we want to group by the year column. And then we want to order by, so let's say we want to order by the sum of sales. And then this is going to be in descending order. So this is going to be our query. And then we can go ahead and run this query and let's see the results there we go so we have the 2015 and then the 2016 and we have the total sales so this is essentially how we can use the azure devops to create a continuous integration and continuous delivery as it really to resource fabric notebook i hope you enjoyed this video if you do like share with your friends comment and follow me for more videos thank you for watching bye for now